Ranger Ambulance and Fire Department Polaris Ranger UTV. It is a crew 570 with the following capabilities. Four person capacity that can carry one driver, two EMS staff and a patient, or it could be four firefighters. This UTV can carry 1,250 pounds while towing 1,500 pounds. It has a 44 horsepower gas engine with nine gallon fuel capacity. And it can go as fast as your guardian angel can fly. However, we will not exceed 35 miles an hour. Here is an overview of the interior. This is the startup sequence for the UTV. To start it up, you're going to put your foot on the brake, turn the key one click to the right. You're going to wait until the lights uh, have the bright colored lights have turned out, and then you're ready to start it up by clicking further to the right. And then you can click back one notch to turn on your headlights. We are now transitioning to the driver's side rear door compartment. We can also call this the primary EMT attendance seat. In here on the ceiling, you have an LED work light with a simple toggle. In front of you is the headset that you can wear to communicate with your patient's headset a headset for the right front and a headset for the driver. All four are in communication. And you can control this module here, turning the unit on, turning the unit off. We'll go into details later. This will be the primary view that you have when you have a supine patient on the Stokes basket within the cab of the UTV. Here we are looking at what is set up to be the patient side or left rear interior of our UTV. You can see how the Stokes basket comes into the cab. However, it is secured in place by a quite stout ratcheting system, both on the front and back of the Stokes basket. More details to come on that. You can see the attendance headset with the patient's headset and again we have the work light above. This is the view looking just forward of the Stokes basket where the secondary EMT and driver will be located. And the primary EMT just to the patient's right. Here's a view of the right front seat. You can see the driver and front seat passengers communications. You can see more of the driver's controls. However, the right front seat can help operate some of the lights and some of the heating. The 
has quite a nice view. If the attendant in this front seat needed to turn around and do any sort of airway management, it is very manageable for them to do so. And the primary attendant sitting there. Here you can see the one, two, and four wheel drive switch on the dash just right of the ignition key. This toggle allows you to move from one wheel to two wheel to four wheel drive. You must be at a stop in order to toggle between these positions. The one wheel drive Polaris calls turf mode. It is literally a one wheel drive mode that allows you to maneuver on hard surfaces, on grass you do not intend to tear up. And it's also the easiest mode to use when trailering both onload and offload of the UTV. Once offloaded, if you see no lights, your rear two wheels are in drive mode. You can go to the full speed of this vehicle on down to a crawl and backwards. Four-wheel drive is indicated by the top light. Again, four-wheel drive, full speed forward, full speed reverse. When it's time to load this back up, toggle back down to one-wheel drive. The doors on our UTV are a heavy gauge canvas with clear vinyl for windows. They are skeletonized on the inside to save weight. An additional feature is every window can be unzippered. And folded down. There is a strap that you can see where you can roll the vinyl up and strap it with this interior. Another advantage to this style of door is if it gets too hot in the summer, we just lift them off the hinges and leave them at home. Very easy. They're easy to wash with warm soap and water and just towel dry just a bit to keep any hard water stains from forming. To open the door, just slip your finger in and pull. To open the door on the inside, There is a hook that you pull towards the back. You pull this way and it unlatches. To know if you've closed your door or not, the handle sticks out when the door is not closed. The handle retracts when the door is closed. This is an overview of the front of our UTV. There are two simple hold downs, one on either side. You just grab the hood, pull it towards you, and you have access to the radiator, wiper fluid, some electrical harnesses. We can adjust our suspensions here. Underneath this is also housed our winch. There'll be details on using the winch at a later video. However, that is where it's housed and the clutch for the height for the winch is on the driver's side. Again, more details to come. Here's a view of the headlights and the front floodlight when they're engaged. An overview of the exterior of our UTV. On the driver's side we have an adjustable mirror. It can be hit with brush, it'll just fold and you put it back into place. Above both doors we have this custom welded rack with tie downs. Use it for whatever you can use it for. It is welded to the frame, it is substantial, it is sturdy. 
It houses this one of the side floodlights on the driver's side, one of the side floodlights on the passenger side. And again, this is the exterior door for the primary caregiver's compartment, or the, otherwise known as the left rear seat. Here we're showing you the dump box, EMS box, end of the UTV. This is normally the dump handle. It has been overridden by the presence of this rack system. This is the EMS box. We have a primary storage. This is where you should put the bags that you want the most. This is our secondary, secondary storage under the stokes. This would be accessory devices that you don't always need. You, won't, you don't always need them because they'll, they'll be under the patient. Not as accessible as you would wish, so we'll have to think ahead. This is the stokes with the exterior ratchet strap. Coming around to the, old, the outside of the passenger side of the UTV, again, you can see our substantial rack system with tie-down loops. It houses our other floodlight and the two doors that you saw these compartments before. Here's how to operate the strap system for our Stokes basket. If you're struggling, you're doing it wrong. You should be able to use your weakest hand, putting your thumb on this portion of the ratchet, push down, lift the ratchet, and you will see the Stokes come loose. Let me do that again. Watch the Stokes come up when the tension is removed. So down, all the way up, tension loose. You can leave it there, lift up, and let go. For securing the stokes, lift up, hook, bring that, the bar back in, come down a notch, and you can see tension. One or two clicks is all you need, and then push it into stowage mode. We do not need to reef this down. Again, to relieve tension, Push down, lift all the way up, watch the stokes, grab this, and remove. I'll go to the interior, remove the interior ratchet, which is located here under the head. Push down, lift up, tension is off, grab and let go, and the stokes is free. Here's a picture of an above average female patient <laughs> loaded onto our Stokes basket. As you can see, there's ample wiggle room. The patient does not feel claustrophobic. <laughs> there's quite a bit of space between the patient and the top and the, the ceiling, interior ceiling of the UTV. And there's plenty of pass through room. Again, we have this work light. That may be a bit bright to the patient, but also may be reassuring to allow them to see you and see their surroundings. One benefit from this setup is there's still ample storage underneath the patient on top of the seat. So we can have our go bags there within, within reach. And here we go back down to the patient's feet. And you'll notice even if the patient is unbuckled, the bulk of the weight holds the stokes onto the EMS box. In this video, you will see the use of the communication system. If you happen to find yourself as the EMT attendant, primary attendant or the left rear seat, you put on the headset with the soft strap on top, the hard harness behind. You want your microphone to 
touch your mask. Don't eat it, but have it touching your mask for optimum performance. You can reach in front of you, turning the top of the knob all the way until the blue light comes on. There is off. There is on. That is the master volume. I recommend operating it at full, then adjusting your individual volume using a knob located just behind the boom of your mic. You can adjust your individual volume for comfort. Here you can see I have a substantial amount of space to get out of the UTV with the headset on my head. The other headsets are attached, tethered to a hold bar, even the patient's headset. So that at any point if you pull too far, it will have a hard anchor stop and you do not run the risk of yanking any wires. Again, master volume at full. You'll see this blue light come on. And then you will use your individual volume to adjust. You can perform your own sound check. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three, until you find a comfortable volume for yourself. And that will be the volume that you hear everybody else at. This comm system is capable of adapting to our portable radios. There will be a push to talk button available either for the attendant, the primary attendant, the right or the right front seat. A word of caution, however, is if the patient decides to communicate something at the point that you push the push to talk button, it will be transmitted. Whether it's an appropriate comment or not, just remember, take that into consideration. In order to fuel the UTV, you need to open the right rear door, accessing the gas cap. It should be easy to open because when you place the gas cap, number one, make sure it's not cross-threaded, and number two, make sure you don't wrench it down too tight.